In this penitential season, we hear the words of God's law revealed on Mount Sinai. The law was given to guide Israel, newly rescued from slavery in Egypt, to become a community reflecting God's love and holiness. However, this law, no matter how full of love it is, will always carry the sting of accusation for us because our hearts have strayed from God's gracious purpose. We aren't capable of fully following the law because we are still captive to the powers of sin and death. So the commandments will always reveal our trespasses. We should not be surprised that God's word convicts even those who have been called into the community of faith. After all, Jesus cleansed even the temple, reacting against sin within the very heart of religious life. These scenes on Mount Sinai and in the temple don't just concern people of times long past. They draw us in as well. In the mysteries of holy baptism and holy communion, we become the house of the Lord. Joined to Christ by grace, we are together the body of Christ and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is zealous for the holiness of his body, desiring that those who have been united to him would walk in love and truth. Our great assurance, though, is that the living word of Jesus is greater even than the revelation on Sinai. Where the law can only convict, Jesus forgives. Where the law reveals our bondage to fear and pride, Jesus brings joyful freedom. In Christ, his body, the church, dies to sin and then, by grace, rises to new life, made clean and holy. Let us not fear the one who calls us into holiness and cleanses the temple with zeal. The law reveals where sin has brought death to our souls. But Jesus has passed through death into a glorious resurrection to make us into a living temple where God's mercy can be found in abundance for us and for the world.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all this day, especially as foggy as it was on the way in. So it's just good to see you. I guess, you know, normally I just get us going here in the morning and everything, but uh, I suppose that uh, since I caught you all just a little bit on the blind side there with my letter uh, last week, uh, and it has come to my attention, I guess, that I wasn't very clear about what's going on there. I just want to assure you all, the only reason I'm checking out is that I'm going to retire. <laughs> you know, it's uh, just one of those things. You know, I'm going to take some time and go be my, with myself and uh, connect again uh, with the wider world, perhaps. Who knows? But I, I assure you, I'm not leaving you to go to another congregation. I'm just going to go out into the woods for a while. Do some trout fishing, you know. Maybe get chased by a bear. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, well, just, uh, well yeah, yeah, maybe. You might be able to wrestle one of those. I don't know. Anyway, I ask you to rise as you're able. And we'll begin worship this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess yes, that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith.
and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. reading today is from the eighth chapter of Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the, re for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subject to fertility, not, to, not, not, of its own, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's the psalm refrain for March 3rd. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Let's sing that together. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. And glorify your name forevermore. In your truth, 
for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Gospel according to St. Mark, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it was with many others some they beat, and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was amazing in our eyes. When they realized that they had told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him. But they feared the crowd, so they left him and went away. Then they sent to him some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperors. Jesus said to them, 
Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, all that we need, your hand has provided. You give us hope. You give us forgiveness. You give us life. In creation, you prepared a place that uh, supports all that is needed for life. You rally around us in times of trouble, showing us love and support with your unending love. When we fall, you pick us up, assuring us that you will never abandon us. Strengthen our resolve that we would put our will uh, to control all things Outside, learning to trust that your faithfulness endures throughout the ages. Through Jesus the Christ. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. There was this little boy who really wanted $100. He prayed for weeks, but nothing happened. So, you know, he decided to write a letter to God asking for the $100. The Postal Service saw that letter uh, that was addressed to God, USA, and sent it on to the President of the United States. Amused, uh, the President uh, uh, in instructed his secretary to send the boy a $5 bill, thinking that this young man would be totally excited to be getting this $5 that would be such an enormous amount of money to him. Well, delighted that the boy uh, got the money, he, he decided to write a thank you note to God then. And he uh, said in that note that um, it was sent off, and the note made it to the president once again because it was addressed, God, USA. And in that uh, letter it said then, it says, Dear God, thank you very much for sending the money. However, I noticed that for some reason you sent it through Washington, D.C., and the guys deducted $95 in taxes. I suppose that's the trap we live in. And perhaps that is why we may be wondering why these two parables that we hear today, these two stories, would even be related to one another. You may even wonder uh, why the leaders of uh, that community of time, uh, the Herodians and whatnot, care about what Jesus thinks about taxes. Well, it's pretty apparent, as we hear in the story, that they just wish to get uh, uh, Jesus to incriminate himself. That way they can claim innocence in about what is to happen. It seems they have Jesus uh, stuck between the rock and the hard place, that place we all have been to at one time or another. Um, whether or not he will be... Uh, uh, defending or uh, uh, standing aside from this problem with the taxes. On the one hand, if he says we need to pay these taxes, it's a necessity, he's apt to drive away his followers and the supporters who are so opposed to the Roman occupation that they would say this is ridiculous, we will follow this man no more. Yet, as we know, if he were to take and, and say, well, no, we should not pay these taxes to this emperor, well, then he would be guilty of treason and they could then try him and have him put to death. It seems to be that that was quite the rock and the hard place, but Jesus, he sets this whole thing straight and perhaps this is the connection that we need to look for. You know, the common thread in all of this is... Um, who really is in charge? Who is it that is in control of what's going on in the world and in our lives? 
You know, the first part of the parable that we hear when we hear the story of the, the vineyard and the landowners, all pretty straightforward, pretty much that we can have uh, known and heard for years about being a straight-up allegory. The one who is uh, God is the one who takes and he builds this vineyard with the watchtower and the wine press. It is God who then uh, higher, uh, places this vineyard, this people, Israel, into his care. And then as we see in the story, we hear of these uh, slaves that are sent out who can be easily seen as a prophets who were sent to the uh, Israelite community one after another who were always uh, uh, killed or beaten or sent away. I remember back when I was first studying uh, in uh, ministry that one of my instructors told me, you should never want to be the prophet because the prophet always ends up being killed. I thought that was kind of strange that here we are, we're supposed to go out and proclaim God's word everywhere we go. Why would you not do that? And I worked my way around it and we figured this all out as we went on. And then we hear in the rest of the story about the son, the heir, who's gen as we know is Jesus the Christ, the son of God who came to rescue Israel. Over the years, this has probably been used as a way to uh, hold down Israel, to uh, uh, push anti-Semitism and whatnot, but that's because we're looking at this with narrow minds. It's true the early writing was directed that way. It's, you cannot argue that it is allegoric. It's, it's just the way it is. The people of that time certainly would have understood that language about the vineyard and who they were. Somehow or another, though, we seem to have lost sight of that. So maybe it's time for us to uh, take a little bit different look at it. Maybe step aside from the allegory and just look at that as the way life is. We have someone who has some power and control of things that decides that he would do a generous thing, I suppose. Start this vineyard. Make it a way for people to make a living. He had the tenants. They were being paid to take care of the land, to take care of the vineyard. Yet, they wanted not to share that profit themselves. It could it be that they were angry that they had lost their land somehow or another. Somebody else now is in control of it and they have to pay to use their own land. Is that what it was? Is it that some people in power do indeed take things that do not belong to them because they know they can do better than the others and try to make it a life that will be good for them and stand tall and mighty saying, oh, I'm quite uh, generous in my ways. See, it's this whole session that we've heard today is about who truly is in charge of everything. And where do we see ourselves in that picture? Do we continually turn to our creator, God, to look for our help in time of trouble? Are we so conformed and ready to uh, dive in the whole nine yards to say that we are nothing without the cross of Jesus the Christ? The one who came to this world to bear our sin, to help us see the error of our ways, to help us to understand that it's not about who is in charge and who's in possession of what, that it has all been given to us to tend for and to care for, to nurture, to share the harvest, to ask others to come in and work with us in the harvest, that we can all tend this beautiful garden that we have been given, and that turn our control over to the one that created it. That we too then can look upon 
who has the true authority in our lives. Yes, perhaps Washington, D.C. took 95 of those $100 from that young man. And I suppose that's their prerogative. They say they do good work for us. We try to care for people. Let them have their way too. But in God's economy, our stewardship is much more important than ownership. And that it is our charge to make sure that we are not being in charge. Amen. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou Sings my soul, 
thy Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Do you believe in God, the Creator? We believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, who in goodness created us and by grace sustains us. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, child of God, who became a human being and lived among us, experiencing full the joys and sorrows and temptations of human life. Walked the earth, he taught and healed, but most of all, he loved and showed us how to love one another. By us and for us, he was crucified, he died and was buried. Yet he rose again and lives on, freeing us and empowering us to be children of God. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit poured out upon the early disciples at the day of Pentecost and upon us in our baptisms. The Spirit has spoken through the prophets, continues still to speak through us today, and joins us together in the body of Christ, yearning within us to pray for those things too deep for words, <coughs> nourishing us in faith, and bringing us to the wholeness of life like everlasting. Amen. As we walk together through the season of contemplation and preparation, we pray for the church, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Catherine, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you have entrusted us with the care of all that you have made. Keep us ever mindful that nothing we have is our own, and that we might be wise and loving stewards of your creation. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. Every hill and valley, every plant and tree, every bird and fish belonging to you, O oh God. May we work diligently for the protection and preservation of the awesome natural world you created. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. Remind leaders at every level that you are to be careful stewards of the people and resources under their authority and hold them accountable to those they serve. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. We are all charged with the loving care of those in our lives who face physical and emotional challenges, especially our members and friends listed in the bulletin and those we may name out loud in our prayers right now. Make our arms extensions of your own and bring healing and wholeness through us and all, through us and all, those who provide professional care. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. We each play a role in the global systems that can either create staggering injustices or work for lasting, cooperative change for the better. Keep us mindful of how our individual actions can have far-reaching effects that we may make, might make wise and loving choices in all we do. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for all the good stewards who have come before us, caring deeply for us, for your church, their communities, and the world. Inspire us to do likewise, that your church might flourish in the world until the end of time. God of the journey. In mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that you walk alongside us in our need, we lift to you all our prayers spoken and unspoken, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace. Okay. 
Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For with this bread and cup we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us 
and on these gifts of bread and wine, bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all of its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. So let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy and fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. read it in the bulletin here. Uh, keep in mind our uh, Help Our Neighbor project and also uh, if you're getting into that Easter breakfast potluck thing, you probably want to get a hold of uh, Debbie or something like that. She's probably kind of putting that one together, I think. So, Other than that, are there any other announcements this day? within the time cycle too so oh Dave you're not going to escape today <laughs> so we have a couple of birthdays but Dave is here so <laughs>
Well, go in peace. Share your bread. Thanks be to God.